In episode two of this road trip series, I'll begin the Wild Atlantic Way and show you where you should start your road trip and why. I don't think there will be a better beach in Ireland. I'll be stopping at the best locations and giving you practical tips to help you plan your own island road trip. Absolutely spectacular. <laughs> of course, it wasn't all plain sailing. Storm Betty is set to bring disruption to much of the country. Flooding, power outages, falling trees, travel disruption and structural damage. But in the end, it turned out to be the best road trip ever. What an insane country. What an insane trip. This is Road Trip Ireland. Welcome back to Ireland. My name's Robbie Rome's. If you're new here and don't subscribe to my channel, don't worry, you're probably part of the 94% of people that watch my videos but don't subscribe. Do me a big favor and just hit the sub button with notification turned on. That'd be good. Oh, by the way, I've also made a free Wild Atlantic Way itinerary, which you can grab at the end of this video. You'll want to watch all the way through anyway. Now let's get straight into it. My Wild Atlantic Way adventure begins at the small village of Crookhaven on Ireland's most southwestern tip, where we meet up with our friends before heading north through some of Cork and Kerry's spectacular peninsulas. After a long day driving, we reunited with Ryan, Laura, Jord, Lucy, Ella, and our local tour guides, Kelly and Killian. You would have definitely seen this motley crew in previous videos on my channel. We actually met at O'Sullivan's Bar in Crookhaven, Ireland's most southerly pub, where we enjoyed a few pints and a well overdue catch up before starting the real exploring the following day. So we're at our very first stop here on the Wild Atlantic Way and we're at Mizzenhead, which is the most southerly point of Ireland, most southerly point on the Wild Atlantic Way. I'm really, really excited to be doing this trip. Um, as you'd have seen in the intro, we're here with the gang, so it's gonna be even better, hopefully. What I've seen of this part of Southwest Ireland so far is absolutely stunning. It's wild, all right. I know it's in the name, the Wild Atlantic Way. It's very rugged, beautiful mountain landscapes, beautiful coastline, and uh, yeah, just really looking forward to getting stuck into it now. So, welcome. It is undoubtedly one of the highlights of this part of Southern Ireland. You basically follow a set of paths along the cliffside. And of course, the main feature is this bridge that bridges the gap between these two pieces of headland. And the views out to sea are just unreal. A fantastic way to start this Wild Atlantic Way journey um, with these bunch of nutters. If you go on a road trip with us, this is what will happen. Lisa's got to tell you so we've just made our way back across the bridge and uh, we were doing a bit of gazing down into the sea and we spotted what was, I think, a giant seal. Well, not a giant one, just a big one. Uh, so yeah, nice way to round off our little adventure around Mies and Head. So we've come to the next destination on this part of the trip and it was like five, 10 minutes from Mies and Head and we are at this, <laughs> out of this world beach called Barley Cove. It's absolutely stunning. We made a quick stop for lunch at the lovely town of Bantry, which has a great motorhome park up before heading on to the Bearer Peninsula. So if you'd have asked me how I could have made this first down the Wild Atlantic Way end in the best way possible, would have been with an incredible sunset, something that I don't get much luck with. But today is not that case. Absolutely spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much better. <laughs> You're on video as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realise this is all going in the video? We ended the night, sat around the fire, chatting absolute rubbish to one another, obviously with a few drinks and some excellently cooked burgers from Chef Killian. The following morning, we made a spontaneous decision to go on a kayaking with seals experience at the nearby Adrigol Harbour, which has, by the way, a beautiful mountain backdrop. It was a stunning morning and we managed to spot at least 10 to 15 seals along the way. If you do want to book on this experience, it's only open in June, July and August, but we definitely recommend it. So after about 15 minutes of kayaking on this kayak with the seals tour, uh, we've come to a little rocky island where there's, what, got to be 10 of them? We 
we've made our way down to Dursey Island and there's basically a cable car which gets you from the mainland on the peninsula over to the island and it's the only cable car system in Ireland so it's a nice thing to come and do. On the island you can do various walks, uh, great for some nice uh, coastal photography, all that sort of stuff. And obviously knowing our luck, we've arrived today and it's shut for two days so they can do some refurbishment. All's not lost because there's an ice cream van. Um, but I'm gonna fly the drone anyway and you can get a, a gist of what this place is like. We continued our loop around the Barra Peninsula where the driving and scenery was absolutely out of this world. We stopped at the village of Ahilles, which really is a must see. I've just made my way down to the beach here in Ahilles. If any of these towns are pronounced incorrectly, I'm so sorry. Even with Kelly, who's our local Irish tour guide, she doesn't even know how to pronounce some of them. So yeah, it, everyone must struggle. But anyway, the beach here is pristine, it really is. Only two days into this trip, I'm beginning to see why they call Ireland the Emerald Isle. It's just so green everywhere you look. But yeah, this setting of this town, village and beach is really, really unique. And I definitely think it's a place, if you're doing the Wild Atlantic Way, you've just got to come through this part and see this village for yourself. It is special. So despite the fact that Dursey Island was closed today, the drive we've done, I think, has been really wholesome. I think that's a word I'd use to describe it. The coastline's been dramatic, the beaches have been beautiful, the Guinness, the Murphy's, whatever you're drinking has been tasty. And uh, this don't wild- Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive in Ireland. This wild Atlantic way uh, is becoming better and better as we go along these peninsulas, it really is. As it was Jordan Lucy's last full evening with us, we headed for a Chinese in Castletown Bearhaven, following Kelly and some local hooligans serenading us with some Irish songs. And we're on day three of our Wild Atlantic Way adventure and we're back to Twat in the Hat. Didn't have a shower this morning. And we've not long crossed the border from Cork into Kerry. And Kelly, our friend who's from Kerry, says that Kerry has the best scenery, the best landscapes and she's not being biased when she says that apparently. Our first stop of the day was the Eurostone Circle, one of the many Bronze Age sites that are located across Ireland. This particular stone circle has a breathtaking backdrop of the Glen Chaquin Park and it's insane waterfall. We didn't actually get up close to it, but I flew my drone for a closer look. made the drive to the town of Kenmare. We've come down to the Rena Gross Woodland Park and uh, this motley crew behind me uh, just preparing a bit of a picnic. And um, we're just on the shores of, I don't know if it's a river or a loch. Yeah, a nice place to have a picnic. The sun's out, great little spot. <laughs> We've come for a walk through town and Ella and Jazz are going to have their fortunes told by Gypsy Leanne. Um, so this could influence the way the trip is going to go from now until the end. Hopefully we'll get good luck and the rest of the trip's going to go well. Let's find out. Good, bud. I'm not allowed to tell anyone You're not. Good experience. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. There he is, the white t-shirt. That's really emotional. Well, I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's good. I'm going to look in the mirror. It's off the circulation to my brain, but... You can get them in bigger sizes, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I look like Irish Peaky Blinders. Yeah. We're on the Ring of Kerry now. We've left Kenmare and we're heading to our campsite for the night. And the coastline, mountains, it's just so grand. And I know that's an Irish term, but it really is. And it's so hard to resist the urge to pull over every three, four, five minutes. 
to get photos and videos of places like this. I mean, look at the colour of that water. There are people swimming. The sun is out. Flabbergasted. So we've got to our campsite for the night and uh, Kelly struck gold with this one. Kelly struck gold in Kerry. Uh, I was trying to think of a pun. So we're at Wavecrest campsite, uh, which is located on the ring of Kerry. And I guess the main selling point of this campsite is its location on the coastline. Fans just behind and we're pitched overlooking at this absolutely magnificent view out to sea. Um, we're just going to sit up here when the sun goes down and enjoy a few beers. Tomorrow we've got a boat trip, a number of other things and if we have a sunset or anything I'll probably show you and if not we'll start again in the morning. I just want to quickly say what an amazing night we had. We obviously had a few beers but the highlight was seeing the dark sky. So the campsite is actually located in the Kerry International Dark Sky Reserve. You'll be able to see the Milky Way with your naked eye. If you're lucky enough to be in this part of Ireland on a dark night Please take the time to look up into the sky and just admire this incredible scenery. Before we get into the second half of the video where we visit Kerry's very best beaches and some jaw dropping locations that you really cannot miss. I just want to quickly tell you about my new road trip island guidebook which is now available. It contains all of Ireland's incredible locations, practical planning tips and stress saving hacks to ensure your very own island road trip is unforgettable. Each location has a QR code, what free words reference and postcode to make navigating simpler than ever. Book includes itineraries, campsites, hotels, B&Bs and off-grid park-ups and it's also full of wonderful photos to help inspire your own trip. And if this is the first time you've heard about my NoFuss travel guides then hello and welcome. My previous three books are Amazon bestsellers and have helped thousands of adventures just like you have the road trip of a lifetime. So yeah, thanks for listening guys. You can grab Road Trip Island direct from my website now. I'm really, really grateful to anyone that's ever read or purchased any of my books. And yeah, that's enough waffle. Let's get back into the video. This morning we've woke up in a joyous mood and we're starting our day straight away down at O'Connell's Bay, which literally just around the corner from where we stayed last night. And I'll stand up on this wall give you a little sweeping view behind me. It's just a beautiful white sandy bay with what can only be described as the best view in the world in the background. I mean this could be in Italy, Spain, anywhere that you would associate with beautiful weather and beautiful white beaches. It could be anywhere but it's not. It's on the Wild Atlantic Way. What a way to start the day. Let's go and check it out. So we've made the 10 minute drive from O'Connell's Cove and we're at Derry Name Beach. Now this is one of the places I was most looking forward to when I was doing the Wild Atlantic Way. But unfortunately, it's another beach. Terrible, terrible beach. Do not come here. Probably one of the worst I've ever seen. And of course, if you didn't get the sarcasm, I was joking. This place is a joke. I don't think there will be a better beach in Ireland. I hope to be proven wrong. And if I am, I will be gobsmacked. Our next stop was Port McGee Harbour where we went on an epic boat tour of the Skellig Islands. The islands were used as filming locations in a couple of Star Wars films and the boat tours offer the chance to view them up close where you'll be able to spot sea life including seals, dolphins, the 60,000 gannets that live on the islands and if you're lucky maybe even a whale. Right behind me is Balin Skellig's beach and this is our last stop of the day and you might be able to see just there Balin Skellig's castle which sits overlooking the bay here and of course the huge Kerry mountains in the background and uh, it's a thing of beauty really. Quite frankly it's been another wonderful day on this Wild Atlantic Way adventure. Uh, the boat trip was great, the pint after was great, it's all just been bloody great to be 
stood here with this view, this sweeping view that goes on for miles. We are so lucky, so, so lucky. Ryan began day five of the trip with a bit of kite flying before we headed to Skellig's Chocolate, a local chocolate factory where you can watch it being made, try some delicious samples, and of course, spend probably like 40 euros on loads of chocolate gifts to take home with you. Oh, it's good. What do you think, guys? It's good. Tastes like chocolate. Tastes, Tastes like orange. Nicer than Terry's. Our final destination today is actually going to be Tralee. We're going to finish off the Ring of Kerry Road. 15 minutes from here are the Cliffs of Kerry, I believe the calls. Really highly recommended thing to do. We're going to skip them because the weather's not so great. And I've been told if the sun's out, it's a magical place. Of course, all these smaller individual places will be in my new Road Trip Island guidebook, which will be available to pre-order by the time this video is out. So yeah, there you go. The last stop was the Cahagor Hill Fort, which was a stone fort which dated back to the 7th century. It was restored in 1970, nice little view over the surrounding valleys, uh, probably worth exploring. And literally less than a mile away is the Ballycarby Castle. It's currently closed to the public, but if you just drive down to the end, there's a car park where you can get a quick photo. I'm just going to quickly fire the drone because it's pretty cool, uh, just the position of it. After a busy day exploring, we made it to Tralee and had a wholesome night enjoying a curry and a few drinks at Kelly's mom's home, where we were warmly welcomed by Mary and Tom. I cannot thank Kelly, Killy and Mary and Tom enough for their hospitality. And one thing's for sure, the Irish are the friendliest, funniest and most welcoming people you'll ever meet. So we've woken up to a fabulous breakfast, the best hospitality ever. Uh, it was a great night last night. One of them nights I think we just needed, bit of a morale booster for the trip. It's coming to the end of this part of the trip with the gang. Tonight is actually our last night. And today we're gonna to tackle the Dingle Peninsula, which is one of the most rugged, wild, and beautiful places in the whole of Kerry, the whole of the wild Atlantic way. The problem we have is that we've got an orange weather warning for severe rain and wind, so I've no idea what's gonna to happen today, but we're just gonna roll with the punches. And what a trip it's been so far, eh? Storm Betty is set to bring disruption to much of the country with four separate alerts now in place. Status orange wind and rain warning then will be in effect from 9pm this evening. Flooding, power outages, falling trees, travel disruption and structural damage. So this is us approaching the Connor Pass, a single track windy mountain road branded as Ireland's version of the Blatnabar Pass, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. Just before the start of the pass, there's a hidden lake you can reach from the lay-by next to the small waterfall. A short scramble up the rocks will lead you straight to it. In the end, the Connor Pass really wasn't that scary. Just take your time and you'll be absolutely fine. The views from the top viewpoint were out of this world and continue as you descend into Dingle Town, where unfortunately the bad weather left us with only one real option to keep ourselves entertained. So we've come over the Connor Pass and it's absolutely pissing down. And it's meant to be getting worse and worse. So the best thing to do in Ireland on a rainy day is play pool and get pissed. So that's what we're doing. So this was our last night as a group and we celebrated with a good old pub crawl around Dingle. We visited a fair few pubs and enjoyed lots of traditional Irish music. It was genuinely one of the best nights I've had on a road trip and one that will certainly stay with me for life. So we've just got back from a night out and I don't normally record when I've had a few beers. And we've certainly had more than a few beers tonight. Um, but in a weird way, it's been a blessing that the weather on the Dingle Peninsula today has been so bad. Archie, shush. We wouldn't have ever had this weird day of hitting up all the pubs around Dingle. We started at like half four, 
and you might hear the, the wind and the rain in the background, it is shocking. There's been weather warnings, you would have seen earlier in the video. And the drive down here was incredible, the Connor Pass was amazing. But to have such an authentic experience around these Irish pubs with the traditional music as a big group of us, it's been such a laugh. We've been up dancing, we've been drinking. Yeah, it's just been amazing, it really has. Like, I've had the best night I've had in such a long time. And I would highly recommend if you can afford a night where you don't hit up the road trip so much, you don't see so many places, but instead you just have a night enjoying the music, the culture, and definitely do it because that's what Ireland's all about and the hospitality the the bars the pubs the food the music just fantastic and like I cannot like speak highly enough of the night we've just had we're gonna pick it up again tomorrow I think we're doing the sleigh head drive and then we're gonna head our separate ways but yeah what a fantastic night see you tomorrow just absolutely marvellous this sea had drive just as you think that you've seen the very best of the wild atlantic way there's just something around the next peninsula or around the next corner that just completely blows your mind And so after completing the Slee head drive, we made it to Tralee, uh, stopped at Mackie D's, and that's where we say goodbye to Ryan and Laura. So they're heading home, and yeah, that pretty much brings this episode to an end. I just can't really describe how amazing the last week has been. I didn't record absolutely everything that we did on the trip, but I am so impressed with Southwest Island, uh, the parts of Cork and Kerry that we've uh, experienced on the Wild Atlantic Way. We've been with a group of people they all get along really well. We've had such a laugh. I knew Ireland was going to be good. I just had no idea on what scale it was going to be. And it is off the charts, to be honest. And in episode three, we're going to continue following the coast, uh, heading north towards Donegal. And from what I've been told from Kelly and Killian, the scenery, the locations just get even better and better. I don't know how that's possible because of what we've seen has really been staggering. So if you have any questions whatsoever about this part of the trip, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget that my new Road Trip Ireland guidebook uh, is now available. Go to robbyromes.com to get that. And if you've got Instagram, go and follow me at robbyromes where I'm posting stuff a lot more regularly than I do on YouTube. I just wanna say thank you for watching and putting up with all the random stuff that I come out with. Half of it doesn't make sense when I'm recording it, so how on earth it turns into a video that you guys watch and even enjoy is beyond me. And yeah, apologies, I'm still wearing last night's clothes. I'm severely hungover, so apologies for that. Not very professional. And I'll catch you guys in the next video, which is going to be episode three. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you all soon, guys.